Welcome to this ninth part in this video tutorial series about the Win32 API. So in the previous part we worked with the open file dialog box and we had this output. Uh, this button is used to uh, display a, an open file dialog box and uh, you can open a file, a text file, um, which will be uh, the content of which will be displayed inside the edit box. So in this part we're first uh, going to look at the close file, uh, sorry, the save file dialog box. Uh, that means when you, you've edited the file or you've created some new text you uh, and you want to save it, the save file dialog box will be used to save your file. Uh, and after that we'll talk about scroll bars and we'll add a scroll bar uh, to our edit box. Uh, and before that, before we be begin, uh, I'll, uh, I need to correct a mistake that I made in the previous part. Uh, we inside the display file function and on line number 48 uh, we're uh, declaring this string using the dynamic memory allocation but um, here I made a mistake that uh, I put parentheses here but you need to put square brackets instead of these uh, and it'll work fine uh, if you do not do this uh, you might have noticed that your application was cra uh, crashing sometimes uh, that was because you had uh, parentheses here now put uh, square brackets and this all is going to be fine. So I'll just build my application again. And it is working. So uh, let's uh, get started with the save file dialog box. So the save file dialog box works uh, pretty much uh, as uh, in the similar fashion as the open file dialog box works. Um, uh, it even uses the, the same structure, the open file name structure, uh, and uh, all this data, uh, all of this is similar for the open file dialog box, but the only, uh, for the save file dialog box, sorry, uh, but the only difference is that instead of get open file name, the function used to create the save file uh, dialog box is get save file name um, so we'll work with that uh, so uh, to start uh, we can see that uh, we had a button here which was called open file this is used to display the open file dialog box uh, uh, through which you can open a new uh, open a file into your uh, program so similar way we will create another button to the right side of it um, and it'll contain the text save file and it'll be used to display the save file dialog box and we'll change its coordinates to 170 comma 10 um, with the same width and height. Uh, it'll be located in the right side of the previous button uh, and we need to change its ID as well. Uh, it was open file button and now we'll call it save file button and we need to uh, actually define this uh, in our program. I'll go here and we'll save file button we'll define it as 2 so this is the ID for the save file button and we can use this ID to handle the case when this uh, button is being pressed so we'll go inside the window procedure where we handle the open file button and we'll add another case to handle the save file button uh, I'll just leave it empty um, until we are going to add any code here uh, so let's first define a new function uh, just like we did for the open file button we declared and uh, defined an open file function which performs the rest of the tasks so similarly we need a save file function which will perform the tasks of saving the file so uh, I, ha I have my open file function right here so since the save file function is going to be pretty much similar I'll start by copy and pasting this uh, copying and pasting this function right here and uh, I this is another copy of it and I'll st start to edit it save file so these functions are currently identical the open file and save file these also take the window handler arguments now only the differences uh, difference first difference will be instead of get open file name inside the save file function you need get save file name and this will display a save file uh, dialog box uh, and so all of this was similar now the last thing that you need to change in this function is this last function display file so in the open file function you actually were uh, getting the path of the file to be opened and then you're calling this display file function which you defined up here which was displaying the contents of the file inside this path but for the save file function we need to do different thing instead of displaying the contents of the file we need to uh, the path that that is uh, returned by this function 
uh, will be the path in which the user wants to save the file the path will also contain the file name so we need to create a file in that path and we need to add all the data inside the edit box to that file so that way the file will be saved so instead of display file the function should be different so I'll just comment it for now uh, and we'll create a new function up here which will be used to write the data inside the file so I'll call it write file and just like uh, the save file function was similar to the open file function so the uh, write file function will be similar to the display file function so first thing will be the arguments uh, it'll also accept the path of the file and the next thing will be uh, the data inside the function this is going to change a lot but I'll still copy and paste it here to show you the changes so the write file function now uh, will uh, I'll just comment okay uh, we'll change the code later on but first let's change inside the save file function we need to call this write file function uh, write file function after we are done getting the path of the file so write file and this uh, path of the file that was returned by this uh, that was that we uh, retrieved using this get save file name function uh, function um, will be sent to the write file function and now we'll write the data in inside the file which is located in this path so first thing uh, we need to open the uh, create a file variable and open it so uh, we earlier were opening the uh, file in the uh, read mode read binary but now we need to you uh, open it in the write mode because now we're going to uh, save the file so uh, this w means that uh, a new file will be created at the path that uh, that that was specified by the user um, and if the file already exists the file will be erased and a new file will be created for uh, writing the data so I'll remove all of this code because we do not need it here so now all of this is, go is going to be different for the write file function so now we have the file and we are ready to read the data from it um, ready to uh, write data into it so first thing uh, is that we need to write the data uh, which is pre present inside the edit box so like the user has uh, entered the text inside the edit box and now he wants to save it into a file so we first now need uh, to read the text inside the edit box we have already done this uh, in a one of the previous tutorials but uh, I'll just explain it in short here so the get window text function is used to retrieve the text present inside the edit box uh, but first we need uh, so since we're going to store this win, uh, st te this text we first need to declare a variable to store that uh, text uh, and for that uh, we need uh, the size for the variable so we first need to know that what length of the text is present inside the edit box so for that we'll use get window text length this function will return the length of the text present inside the edit box we need the handler for the edit box uh, here now so the edit box uh, has the handler hedit so we'll copy this and we'll paste it here so we'll this function will return the text uh, the length of the text which is present inside this uh, edit box so we'll store it inside the variable size now we now that that we know the length of the text inside the edit box we can now read its text into a variable but we first we need to allocate the memory and declare the variable so that will be character uh, a string actually data equal to new character square brackets character uh, array of characters of uh, size will be size plus one uh, you need to ac uh, add another extra element for the string terminating character so we have this uh, memory allocated to store the data and now we'll read the text into it <coughs> so the get window text function the first thing is the handler for the win uh, for the control of which you want to read the text so that is hedit um, we need to read the text from the edit box and the second thing is the uh, uh, variable in which you want to read the text and the last vari uh, last argument is the size uh, of the text that has to be read uh, so that is size plus one so now the text has been read inside this data variable 
and, it, and all the text is stored inside this now now we can write all of this stuff into our file so I'll use the f write function to write this uh, data inside the file um, so first thing is the data first argument is the data that has to be written the second argument is the size of the data which is size plus one and the next argument is count uh, so this much amount of data has to be written in the file all at once so the count will be one uh, and the last argument is the pointer to the file so after this all of the data will be written to the file and now uh, since we're working with uh, open file and uh, write f uh, open file and uh, save file both dialog boxes the thing that I forgot to do in the previous part was close the file after we have finished working with it so uh, after the set window text you can actually call call f close file for this display file function and as well as for the write file function because if you do not clo close the file uh, then uh, and then you try to open that same file again the uh, application will not be able to access this because the file is already in use so uh, you have always got to close the file after you finish working with it so uh, we have all the code and now we'll go into the wm command function here in the case save file button I'll add the function call save file and the window handler will be passed into it so let's go over this procedure once again um, so once the user enters his text inside the edit box he can press the save file button and when he has pressed the save file button this case will be called and the save file function will be called with this uh, handler window so the save file function now um, creates a structure uh, creates an op uh, creates a save file dialog box and uh, the user uses the dialog box to choose the path of the file and the name of the file and that path along with the name is sent to the write file function and the write file function first creates the file at that path of uh, the name that the user wants uh, and the file is opened in write mode and the data is read from the edit box and that data is stored inside the file and the file is closed so that is all and now you can build and run the application to check if this is working and here it is I'll now write some data and I'll click the save file button and it'll open up the dialog box and in this directory I'll call my file uh, abc.txt and you can see this these options are still here um, abc.txt and I'll click save so this file has been saved now I'll erase all the data and now I'll click open file to open the file and now you can see abc.txt I can click on the file and click open and this file is opened uh, you can try it with different text uh, I can save a different file here and it has been saved and now I can again go open file and uh, it is opened so this is how we work with uh, the open and save file uh, dialogs and we have uh, the functionality of both opening and saving the file uh, and now the last thing you want is your edit box to be a little more feasible so for that you might uh, want scroll bars here like if you check uh, if I show you right now if you exceed the number of lines it starts scrolling automatically and there's no way to scroll up uh, without pressing the up key on the keyboard and going all the way up so um, it'll be convenient if you had scroll bar uh, if you had a scroll bar here and also a horizontal scroll bar so for that a uh, thing you need to do is go down uh, to where you created this edit box and uh, you can see we enabled auto vertical scrolling um, this is uh, this was automatic and uh, this means that scrolling is automatic and scrolls automatically as more text is entered there is no scroll bar for this if you want the scroll bar you you have to replace it with window style uh, um, you can uh, notice that uh, earlier we had edit style auto scroll auto v scroll but now we're going to have w, uh, ws which stands for window style um, v scroll not automatic just v scroll and we'll also have horizontal scrolling v scroll and at scroll window styles and now we'll build and run this and you'll see that there are two scroll bars uh, around your edit box uh, these scroll bars are 
for now grayed out because there's these are not in use but once you exceed the number of lines the scroll bar becomes visible and you can now use it to scroll uh, up and down the horizontal scroll bar will also become visible after you've exceeded the lines and you can now save this file scrolling.txt and I'll save this and similarly when I open the application later uh, I can go open file and I can use the scrolling dot uh, open the scrolling dot txt and here is my file so this is just uh, become just like a little text editor um, which uh, does not have many features but it is working so uh, this is all for this uh, part in this uh, tutorial series uh, and uh, in the next part uh, what I'm going to do is I'll come up with a challenge for you that is going to be a simple uh, simple uh, like notepad like application which will be which will be a text editor actually um, that will have uh, some basic features of a text editor I'll just show you the application and it'll be a it'll be a challenge for you to create uh, a similar application so uh, stay tuned for the next part and thanks for watching